Hey everybody, so a little background on Magic Castle. It was a game that was originally developed back in 97-98 and was pitched to Sony to be released on the PlayStation 1. When the developers sent a VHS tape of gameplay to Sony in an effort to get the game published, Sony initially liked what they saw. But instead of saying yes, make your game for our system, they told them to make a different game. Since the developers didn't want to be controlled by corporate means, they said, okay, never mind. They took their game, it got canceled. It was never released. Until now. One of the original developers of Magic Castle that goes by Pirowo on Twitter released the game. He finished the game and it is now available for free to everybody. And it's a really fun game. If you're into the dungeon exploration RPG roguelite, type of games, you will love this. It also has four player capabilities, but that function isn't available right now. But the developer says he's gonna work on it. Now we finally have a chance to play a game that was developed 20 years ago for the first time. And in this video, I'm gonna show you guys how to play Magic Castle on official Sony hardware, the PlayStation Classic. I've tested it over the past couple days and it seems to run perfectly. I've even tested it on an emulator on my PC and it runs on that as well. I'll have all the files that you need to get it running on the PlayStation Classic in my description so you don't have to go looking for them. If you are new to adding games to the PlayStation Classic, you will need a flash drive or a card reader with an SD or micro SD card. It's recommended you use a 2.0 flash drive rather than 3.0. The PlayStation Classic has power limiters in the USB slots and a lot of flash drives or card readers won't work if they are 3.0. So to be safe, use a 2.0 drive. My program of recommendation is AutoBleam. It is an amazing program. You don't have to install anything to the device itself. Everything is ran from the flash drive and I'll have a link to AutoBleam in my description as well. So let's get started. What you're gonna need is the newest version of AutoBleam 0.9.0 and then of course your game files. The game files are in bin and Q format and it comes with a readme text. I recommend you do take a look at the readme because it does have a lot of useful information such as what the controls are since there was no real manual made for this game and what abilities each item has that you can pick up for each specific character. The first step is to prepare our flash drive. Insert your flash drive into your PC. You want to right click it and go to format. Make sure the file system is FAT32. Quick format is selected and volume label has to be Sony all capitals. When you're ready, hit start. You'll get your notification that formatting will erase all data on the disk. Click OK. You'll get the message that the format is complete. Click OK one more time. Close out the format screen and now you have your Sony drive. Open up your AutoBleam folder. If you're new to using AutoBleam, I recommend taking a look at these text files. They explain a few things with the different features that AutoBleam has. You want to highlight all the folders, right click and copy, then paste them onto the root of your flash drive. Once the files have been transferred over, open up the games folder. This is where you're going to place any PS1 games you want to run on the PlayStation Classic. I like to keep my games separated, so I always create a new folder in here. So I right click, new, folder, and name it Magic Castle. Open up your Magic Castle folder, highlight your Magic Castle bin and Q files, right click, copy, and then paste them into that folder. And that's all there is to it. We're going to safely remove the flash drive from the PC, and then I'm going to plug it into the second controller port on my PlayStation Classic, and we're going to start it up. When you first start up AutoBleam and after you've hit the X button to scan your games, hit start to go into the menu. And if we go over, we can see we have Magic Castle here, but it has no box art. And if we look at the game settings, we have no information on it. If you want to change that box art, just go back into your games folder and then back into your Magic Castle folder. And the art will be this PNG file right here. If we double click it, we have that cover not found image. I made my own image for the game. It's nothing special. It's just a logo with a gradient background on it. So if you want to use your own image, make sure it is 226 by 226 pixels. I'm going to drag my picture into this folder. I'm going to take the name of this file and change the name of my new file. Delete the old one. And as long as the naming of your new box art matches the naming of everything else, you should be fine. If you want to change the publisher name and the year released, you want to open up this game INI file. I suggest using a program such as Notepad++. And in this file is where you can edit the information such as the number of players, 
the publisher, region, and the year released. Once you're done, save it. You safely remove the drive from your PC and everything should be changed. There we go, that's a little bit better. It's not the best box art, but you know, I made it real quick. And if we go into these settings, we can see the publisher, the year, the number of players, very cool. Let's start it up. First thing is you are greeted with this menu with a few options here. You can choose between playing the full game, the beta version, or watching the actual promo video that these guys sent to Sony to try and get their game published. It still retains its VHS format and everything. You also have a couple language options here. And then when you're ready, just hit start. Now for some story. In another time, in another world, a treasure laid hidden within a magic castle ruled by an evil lord who turned stolen riches into an army of monsters. More than 20 years ago, four raiders joined forces against this tyrant and set on a quest to assault the fortress and locate the treasure. Their story had remained untold until now. Very interesting. A 20 year old story, hmm? And Kaiga presents Magic Castle. As you can see at the bottom, we got 1998 when the game was originally developed, and then 2020 when it was finished. So we have a few options here. Uh, let's go to unlockables first. There's nothing there. We haven't unlocked anything yet. Uh, going to training next. Now this uh, game has a very extensive training, um, but there's one problem. It's all in Japanese and I can't understand a bit of it. You can actually move around during this training and you can tell they put a lot of work into it because every time you hit select it goes to another training section and there are so many of these training sections explaining the game and how it works and all the characters and everything but unfortunately it's all in Japanese so we don't get to experience this awesome training mode. Let's take a look at the options. We have our memory card options, choosing what slot the memory card ends, loading data, saving data, scoreboard. Keep track of your rank and the coins that you accumulated on either normal or hard difficulties. And for the unlockables, escape the blaze, raid at night, treasure hunt, black knight and cursed. No idea what any of those are. I haven't played enough of the game to really see any of that cool stuff. Sound options, you can turn on or off the background music and sound effects. Then you have your game options. You can adjust the screen, control the camera. Now with the PlayStation Classic controller, you don't have the analog sticks and there's a couple of controls using those analog sticks. One, you don't have the movement with the left analog stick and for the right analog stick, you can control the camera. Also, if you push in the left analog stick, you get some statistics like coins collected and, and different objectives that you've completed. You won't have that, but the game is still completely playable without that. Also, while I'm talking about controls, this uses the Japanese method where the circle button is accept and the X button is cancel. Two difficulty options, normal and hard. You can turn the fairy on or off. I'll go into what the fairy is about when we get into the game. No idea what quick turn is because I've never turned it on or off and I never bothered to check it out. And then our last option is our tag style. You have a choice of four different tags that are over your character's head as you play. Right, let's take a look going into new game you can select a character for each player spot now once again four player mode is not active yet that functionality has not been implemented you can play two players though and it works just fine also you can control two characters with one controller if you set somebody to the player three position they'll just move the same as your player one character as well and you got four characters to choose from you have the knight the wizard fighter and archer we're gonna go solo with one knight. He's our beefy guy. I think we're gonna stick with him. Let's go. All right, so floor one, you can move around with the D-pad. X makes your character jump. Square, you can attack. Right now, circle and triangle don't do anything. You can see our user interface up in the top corner by hitting the L1 or R1 button. You can cycle through your items. If you hit start, you will pause the game and you can check your items out that way as well. Something really, really cool about this game though, if you hit start one more time, your gameplay hasn't started yet. By pushing left and right, you can actually move your user interface around the screen. This is so, so cool. I love how it looks. So if you want it in the middle, put it in the middle. You want it on the bottom, go ahead and put it down there. I thought that this feature 
was really, really cool. Alright, we're going to hit start again. And here's our fairy. So here's what the fairy does. If you jump into it, if you, if you jump, if you jump into the, if you jump into the fairy, if you jump into the, if you jump, if you, okay, if you jump into the fairy, it gives you more of a bird's eye view of the, uh, the room that you're in. All right, moving into the next room. Okay, so we don't have camera control, so some things are a little obscured, but if you go behind a wall, the camera will move automatically for you to try and make sure that your, your character isn't hidden. Let's open up this chest already. We got some money. Got a new sword. What do we got? The light blade. All right. So let's uh, cycle through our items to the light blade. Hit triangle to equip that item. We now have a better sword. Oh, it's super fast. Super fast sword. Also, we have these vines that you can climb on. He climbs one-handed. The freaking knight does not play around. Pushing left or right kind of swings you around the vine. And whatever side of the vine you're on, when you jump, that's the direction that you jump off. Let's take care of some of these bad guys. All right, super strong knight. These slimes have nothing. They can't even compete with our knight. And like the story went, the guy who took over this castle, the lord, he uh, turned all this the treasure that he stole into these monsters. That's why when they die, they become coins and things like that. An actual reason for enemies to be carrying, you know, riches. So this key right here, this is how you move from floor to floor. Each time you play this game, uh, you want to try and finish the 20th floor. That's the objective. Hitting this key will take you to the new floor, and it's going to stay here and bounce around until you smack it. So you have a choice. You can immediately try and go to the next floor, or you can uh, go around and see if there's any more doors to go through, some more enemies to fight and treasure to find. And that's what we're going to do. I like the graphic style. Um, they kind of remind me of Saga Frontier a little bit with the, the 2D graphics. And then you got the 3D plane. So it's, it's a really nice mix of graphics. Ooh, that's a nice fountain. So we're trying to take out these rats. The rats are not too bad unless there's a lot of them. Actually, in the uh, the early game, a lot of enemies, period, is not a good thing. Because they will really ruin your game pretty fast. Ooh, we got a level up. There's a bat trying to attack us, apparently. He did a little damage to us. No problem. So not too much left on this stage. Let's go get that key and move on. It's still clanging, and you will hear that key clanging the entire time you're in the room with it. All right, let's go. Floor number two, we've got a little bit of a music change. Atmosphere looks a little bit different, kind of kind of cave-like. Let's see what we got going on over here. Oh, we got a big rat in our way. Juggling, juggling, we got the juggles. Oh, I hit the fairy on accident. So that might be a reason why you want to turn the fairy off so you don't accidentally hit it and it kind of changes your whole viewpoint. Oh, we found the key already. Oh, I think I just did some kind of special attack with the light blade. If you hold down the attack button and let go, he does a, ooh, a dashing slash. I'm almost dead. Remember what I said about a lot of enemies? Yeah, I wasn't joking. They will uh, ruin your day pretty quick. This is not a very easy game. There's there's definitely some challenge to it. And we got a level up. That's good. And we hit the key. And that's okay. Big empty room here. What do we got on the upside? All right, two big rats. My favorites. They are not my favorite. That's a lie. The big rats always ruin my game. Either that or ghosts. And if we see a ghost, I'll uh, I'll explain that to you because that's a whole nother thing. We got an SP potion for our special attack. So wait, does that dash you special attack energy? No, it doesn't. That's just super, super attack. All right, hopefully these rats don't take care of us. Oh, oh, these enemies, nothing. With this sword especially, this is a great sword. Oh, we found the key already. That was quick. Let's keep moving, see if we can find any more treasure. Oh, well, I found rats. I found a lot of rats. This is what I'm talking about. These rats, well, it doesn't matter how strong you are. If they gang up on you, if they feel like messing you up, they're all following the big rat. That's weird. Um, your game's done. It is permadeath. This is a roguelite, meaning once you're dead, that's it. Um, it has very arcade rules. Um, the, there's not really a story or an end objective. There's a small story. But the thing is, it just is get as far as you can, get a high score, and things like that. So I would love to play this multiplayer one day because I bet it would be a ton of fun.
Also, if I'm correct, you won't take fall damage, but if you fall from this height, uh, you'll get dizzy when you land. So let me test that out real quick. Yeah, so uh, no damage, but you know, I was uh, a little defenseless there for a little bit. And we found the key already, wow. So the green slimes are no match for me, and these red ones who split up, I don't like that. Too many enemies, too many enemies. And yep, that king, ah, oh, the sound of that key bouncing around music to my ears. I love it. And another level up. Let's get out of here. Oh, we have a dark level. And the music changed. Okay. I'm not good at the dark levels. Okay, it was just a dark room. No problem. But what's down there? That doesn't look like a rat. Oh, we got skeletons. Oh, I'm dead. Uh, just like that. That's how it happens. I'm gonna take a look at a new character. I haven't messed with the fighter at all. See how much different he is from the knight. Oh, he's, he's a little bit faster. Oh, I think he jumps higher. Oh, he's got a jump kick. Nice. He really looks like he belongs in Saga Frontier. Got the high... the hit points potion! Alright, red potion for healing. Nice. He attacks really fast with no weapon. Oh, that slime tried to... oh my gosh, the combos! The fighter! Wow. All right, let's just move on. Let's let's keep going. Already we got treasure. Perfect. Ooh, we got the muscle ring. Equip it. Extra ability. What's the extra ability? Circle. I don't know what he's doing. He's bending over. Oh, can I pick up enemies now? That would be a really cool ability. Oh, I can pick up the bad guys and throw them at other ones. Oh my gosh. I love the fighter. I apparently got the key already. That was really quick. Sometimes you gotta be careful with uh, your attack. Oh no! The ghost! Okay, well, you couldn't see it very well, but um, there was a ghost on the other side of that door. Ghosts hurt. They hurt real bad, and you see them early game, and one hit from them will kill you. And you can't attack them back. You need a ghost trap, and I've only gotten to do it once, and it's kind of cool. You throw the trap at the ghost, and if he runs into it, he just, like, explodes out of the way. Really cool. So, uh, yeah, this, uh... Fun game. A little bit hard. There you have it, Magic Castle on the PlayStation Classic. This is a game I would have eaten up when I was younger if it had been released. And the fact that they had this intended to be played with up to four people is pretty amazing. Let me know in the comments below if you've even heard of Magic Castle. And if you have, have you tried it? How do you feel about it? Did you enjoy it? How do you feel about AutoBleam? It's still, in my opinion, the best program you can use to mod your PlayStation Classic. Are you looking forward to more updates from the developer on Magic Castle? Leave me a comment down below. I love to hear what you guys think about all this stuff. And that's all I have for you. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. And I'll see you next time. This is the part of the video where I thank those users who support the channel through YouTube memberships and Patreon. Door, Rick67, Travis Morton, Geode, Jason Holbrooks, James Burkhart, Mike Muniz, Red Silvers, Sam Torres, Yaroslav Orudzov, Andre G, Din Cardoso, Red, Dirtnap79, Lenmare, James McEwen, Jeremy Mullins, Bob, Travis Is Win, and Batman.